The entire history of the development of life on Earth is a series of evolutionary explosions and mass extinctions. After some of them, life began its revival almost from scratch. The largest extinction at the moment is considered to be the cataclysm that occurred at the border of the Permian and Triassic periods. Today, we will talk about the causes and consequences of this gigantic environmental disaster. The videos published on the Age of Dinosaurs channel tell about the appearance and disappearance of a wide variety of living organisms. By subscribing to it, you can be the first to know when new videos are released. Your likes and comments will help make our videos more interesting. Also, thanks to the activity of subscribers, more viewers will be able to see them. According to researchers, approximately 90% of marine and 70% of land species disappeared over a relatively short period of time. Some of them were unique and had features that were not characteristic of subsequent species of living beings. But this great extinction event in the history of our planet has also had some positive aspects. The disappearance of animals at the end of the Permian period became a chance for the development of other groups of living organisms. This primarily affected dinosaurs and other reptiles. For the next 185 million years, it was they who became the masters of the globe. But in the shadow of these giant lizards, the first mammals arose and began to develop. This later led to the emergence of such a creature as man. The cause of the extinction as in other similar cases, was a sharp change in the planetary climate. Most of the inhabitants of Earth simply could not adapt to the new living conditions. But the debate about what triggered climate change continues to rage in the scientific community to this day. If the reason for the extinction of dinosaurs 66 million years ago is visible to the naked eye, it looks like a huge asteroid crater in the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists have not yet found traces of a collision between the Earth and any similar object on the border of the Permian and Triassic periods. Therefore, over the past decades, several theories have been put forward related to the causes of the Permian extinction. Some scientists believed that climate changes at that time were associated with the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea. The appearance of such a large formation changed the topography of the seabed and affected the overall depth of the world's oceans. Also, many researchers note a sharp decrease in oxygen levels in the seas and oceans of that period. Both options may well explain the disappearance of a large number of marine animals and plants, but the inhabitants of land under such conditions would have suffered less or the process of their extinction would have been extended over a longer period of time. But the most consistent version for many years was prolonged volcanic activity. The bulk of this activity occurred in the so-called Siberian Traps. This name was assigned to the lava traces, which have a stepped shape. Trappa can be translated from Swedish as steps. Until 1992, it was believed that intense eruptions had occurred in Siberia for about 5 million years, when a stream of hot magma, called a plume, rises to the surface, it begins to melt the Earth's crust. Something similar, only on a much smaller scale, can now be observed in the Pacific Ocean near the Hawaiian Islands. 250 million years ago, a sea of lava spilled across the expanses of the Siberian plain. Volcanoes released millions of tons of ash and various gases into the atmosphere. All this came back in the form of acid rain. The greenhouse effect has increased. The planet began to gradually warm up, and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere began to rapidly fall. The worst thing in this case was for the marine inhabitants. An increase in water temperature led to the disappearance of a huge number of a wide variety of microorganisms. At that time, only anaerobic bacteria felt good. 
These organisms began to actively process sulfur, releasing hydrogen sulfide into the water and atmosphere, which further worsened the situation. But over time, continued warming of the water caused increased decomposition of bottom sediments containing methane. This further increased the greenhouse effect. Now, atmospheric oxygen was also spent on the oxidation of huge amounts of methane. The long-term extinction of almost all terrestrial fauna associated with another weather cataclysm for many years becoming the main version of events that happened at the end of the Permian period. But in 1992, a group of scientists from the University of Birmingham conducted research in one of the areas of the Italian Alps. Based on the samples taken there, an amazing discovery was made. Traces of the presence of living organisms ceased to be found in the rock layers over a very short period of time. Scientists have reported that the Permian extinction did not last millions, but at best tens of thousands of years. The whole theory of gradual increase in the greenhouse effect and the decrease in the amount of oxygen required serious revision. Again, opinions were voiced about a collision with an unknown large space object. In Australia, a small amount of shock quartz was found the sand grains of which bore traces of a strong impact. Isotopes of helium and argon with a special structure were discovered in the Antarctic region. It is believed that such compounds were characteristic of carbon-rich meteorites. These celestial bodies existed at the dawn of the solar system. Quite a lot of indirect evidence of the collision of the planet with an asteroid was found. but. Scientists were unable to find a crater. At this point, the search for the causes of the greatest extinction died down for some time, and all new evidence was based on existing findings and theoretical studies. In particular, some scientists have suggested that in addition to the volcanic activity itself, the burning of coal deposits in Siberia had a great influence on the process. Of course, the coal caught fire precisely under the influence of hot lava, but the combustion products that entered the atmosphere significantly complicated the already difficult situation of the planet. Periods of major volcanic activity closer to us always ended with a decrease in the average annual temperature. For example, Scientists recorded a decrease in temperature after the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the 90s of the last century. A similar situation occurred after the eruptions of the Krakatoa and Tembora volcanoes in the 19th century. This caused crop failure throughout the European continent. In the 17th century, a volcano named Huanya Putina erupted in South America. At the same time, Russia experienced crop failures and severe famine for three years. And in the case of the extinction of the dinosaurs, volcanic activity caused by the fall of a meteorite led to the beginning of the next ice age. But at the end of the Permian period, this mechanism worked in reverse. By a strange coincidence, the temperature on Earth increased rather than fell. In the standard scenario of such cataclysms, everything looks quite simple. The curtain of smoke and volcanic dust became impenetrable to the sun's rays. The sun stopped heating the atmosphere and surface of the planet. The climate on Earth becomes much colder, sometimes for quite long periods of time. But about 251 million years ago, nature decided to take a different path. Some scientists believe that the cause of climate warming at the end of the Permian period was the destruction of the ozone layer. In fact, substances that are released during volcanic eruptions are capable of destroying atmospheric ozone molecules. True, this fact does not explain in any way why ultraviolet rays were not absorbed by sulfur dioxide. The amount of sulfuric acid elements released during the eruptions can protect the atmosphere and surface of the planet from exposure to sunlight. Another mystery associated with the Permian extinction 
contradicts the theory of the death of living organisms from the consequences of volcanic activity. The peak of this activity occurred in areas located in the northern hemisphere, but for some reason, the flora and fauna in the tropical zone of this hemisphere suffered much less than in a similar zone in the southern hemisphere. Interestingly, a large percentage of endangered species occur in the polar regions of the planet. According to scientists, during the disaster, the water at the poles became warmer by about 15 degrees Celsius, and in tropical zones, its temperature increased by 10 to 12 degrees. But given that the water at the poles was initially colder, the subpolar ocean waters still remained more attractive for marine animals. Similar processes are currently taking place on our planet. Global warming has led to marine animals gradually moving to colder waters, that is, in search for more comfortable living conditions. They move from the equator towards the poles. By evolutionary standards, this happens simply instantly. For many species, it took only decades to change habitats. Why didn't the animals of the late Permian period do the same? It is unlikely that evolutionary mechanisms have worked any differently for 250 million years. Some researchers claim that the warming and subsequent extinction was caused by a sharp increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But there is also evidence that about 55 million years ago, carbon dioxide levels were about the same level as during the Permian extinction. Even the average annual temperature was only one degree lower. Scientists call this period the Paleocene-Eocene Maximum. But back then, there was no global extinction. On the contrary, the number of living organisms and the diversity of species increased rapidly. So, was warming really the cause of the greatest extinction event in Earth's history? A large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causes intensive plant growth. Following this, the number of herbivores and the predators that eat them increases. There is also more living space for all animals. When there's an excess of carbon dioxide, there are no deserts. All of the above facts indicate that the climate warming that occurred at the end of the Permian period could not cause mass extinction but it still happened. In 2017, a group of scientists from Switzerland conducted a study of samples collected in China. Based on the results of these studies, they came to the conclusion that traces of the presence of life disappeared from the sediments about 10,000 years earlier than previously thought. It would seem that by the standards of earthly evolution, an extra 10,000 years cannot affect anything. But it is precisely during this time period that the level of the world's oceans decreased. But with strong warming, there should have been more water in it. Based on this data, scientists decided that the extinction occurred during a period of cooling, and warming caused by volcanic activity happened later. Perhaps the answer to the riddle about the causes of the Permian extinction was found at the beginning of the 21st century. Modern research methods have made it possible to discover a rather strange geological formation hidden under the ice of the planet's south pole. It has the shape of a crater with a diameter of about 480 kilometers. The middle part of this crater consists of very dense layers of rock. Such density could have arisen as a result of the fall of a large celestial body. To obtain a crater of such dimensions, the diameter of the asteroid had to at least be 20 kilometers. For comparison, it is worth saying that the diameter of the crater that appeared when the meteorite fell, which put an end to the era of the dinosaurs, is only 180 kilometers. The methods of analysis available to modern scientists say that the age of the Antarctic crater does not exceed 500 million years. But it is impossible to say for sure that it was this meteorite that caused the global catastrophe at the end of the Permian period. Now it is located under a layer of ice more than one kilometer thick. 
But the Siberian traps are located almost on the opposite side of the globe from the impact site. Maybe in the future, scientists will be able to somehow confirm or refute one of the versions. But for now, it is impossible to put a final point on the question of the causes of the Permian extinction. The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction was not the most massive in the history of our planet, but it is the most famous because it was then that the dinosaurs became extinct. In addition to them, various groups of living beings suffered. The mammals that lived at that time also suffered. Very few were destined to adapt to the new conditions of existence. During the study of the issue of mass extinctions of species, many versions were put forward. Most scientists now agree on how events unfolded 66 million years ago. Subscribe to the Age of Dinosaurs channel. Our videos tell not only about different types of these lizards, but also about other prehistoric animals. By subscribing, you can be the first to know when the next issue is released. With the help of comments and likes, you can help in the development of our channel and its promotion according to the platform's algorithms. Paleontology emerged as a separate branch of science about 200 years ago. Its founder is considered to be the naturalist and zoologist Georges Cuvier. This French aristocrat put forth a revolutionary hypothesis at that time, explaining the extinction of animals. Before this, it was difficult for scientists to imagine that some species of living beings could completely disappear on their own. Cuvier believed that mass extinctions were the result of catastrophes on a planetary scale. Of course, such catastrophes were explained by acts of divine intervention in the development of life. The scientists called the global flood the last of such acts. But the 19th century was a century of rapid development of scientific thought. At that time, it was already well known that many millions of years ago, our planet was inhabited by giant reptiles. In 1851, life-size statues of iguanodons were even exhibited at the World's Fair in London. In 1859, Charles Darwin published his famous work on the origin of species. The theory of the evolution of life on Earth began to gain more and more supporters. The scientific world is divided into two camps on the issue of the causes of the extinction of various species. Some scientists argued that natural disasters contribute to the disappearance of certain living beings. Others believe that extinction occurs gradually under the influence of competition between the animals themselves. Less successful, and therefore extinct, were those who could not quickly adapt to changes in living conditions. It was this point of view that became dominant among most researchers for many years. It has become not very common to talk about the instantaneous extinction of dinosaurs by geological standards. In addition, scientists did not have confirmed information about the catastrophe that happened 65 million years ago. Now, the main version of the extinction of dinosaurs and other species of living beings at the border of the Cretaceous and Paleogene eras is the collision of the planet with a huge meteorite. But before the appearance of real evidence of this theory, many other hypotheses were put forward by various scientists. Cosmic Radiation Burst There's a version that the dinosaurs were killed by gamma radiation, which destroyed the ozone layer of the planet. This burst was caused by a supernova explosion or a collision of stars a short distance from Earth. The disappearance of the ozone layer caused dramatic climate change, which caused the extinction of animals, plants, and microorganisms. Active Volcanic Eruption The cold snap that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs was caused by the release of millions of tons of volcanic ash into the atmosphere. But not all scientists are sure that the volcanic activity at the end of the Cretaceous period was triggered by a meteorite fall. In their opinion, this could be a natural process, but this made its consequences no less tragic. For several years, the planet could be left with virtually no sunlight. 
This led to the extinction of plants and some microorganisms. Then herbivores, small animals, and then large predators disappeared. True, opponents of the scenario provide very serious arguments refuting the possibility of such scenarios. They say that any volcanic activity affects the climate gradually, and dinosaurs showed a high level of adaptability during their development. This means that volcanic activity itself could not lead to their rapid disappearance throughout almost the entire territory of the Earth. Changes in Sea Levels This phenomenon is called Maastricht Regression. It consisted of a decrease in sea level in 180 meters. Similar changes accompanied by all previous mass extinctions. Most often, a decrease in the amount of water in the world's oceans is associated with the growth of glaciers in the polar zones. But some scientists explain the regression of the end of the Cretaceous with the formation of large mountain ranges in Eurasia and Western America. This was a real disaster for marine life. The most densely populated part of the seas and oceans are the coastal shelves. It was they who suddenly found themselves part of the land. Many microorganisms, corals, and fish became extinct. This also affected the numbers of mosasaurs, which were the dominant reptiles of the time. It is noteworthy that ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs began to disappear long before the events described. Killer Plants One of the most common plant-related dinosaur extinctions is a lack of food due to cold weather. But some scientists put forward another option for the death of the fauna at the end of the Cretaceous period. The fact is, at this time, flowering plants were already actively spreading across the planet. They contained alkaloids that became poison for dinosaurs. Their digestive system was unable to adapt to the change in food chemistry. Changing the polarity of the planet's magnetic field It is believed that the Earth's magnetic poles periodically change places. For some time, the entire planet remains without a magnetic field, which serves as a natural barrier to cosmic radiation and holds the atmosphere in place. Some scientists argue that the planet can remain in this state for a millennia. This is accompanied by enormous natural disasters, killing living nature or leading to the appearance of mutations. Tectonic Shifts At the end of the age of the dinosaurs, the continents had not yet taken their current places. Their active drift continued. This was accompanied by a shift in the boundaries of water and land drying up of inland water bodies and climate change. Also, the movement of tectonic plates caused volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and other disasters. A number of researchers claim that dinosaurs did not have enough time to adapt to new conditions. Problems with offspring Don't forget that dinosaurs were reptiles at their core. Despite the fact that many of them were covered with feathers, and some had already become warm-blooded, they continued to lay eggs. The sex of newborn dinosaurs may have depended on environmental temperature. Similar phenomena are observed in some species of modern crocodiles. If there was a cold snap at the end of the Cretaceous, then only females could hatch from eggs. Considering that the cooling lasted for more than one year, reproduction could have slowed down significantly this eventually led to the gradual extinction of many species of dinosaurs. The weak point of this theory is that along with dinosaurs, a large number of completely different animals became extinct. Mammals of that time also suffered greatly, and the sex of their offspring should not have depended on climate in any way. Mysterious Epidemic there's an assumption that the reason for the extinction of dinosaurs was the emergence of new types of deadly viruses. Scientists believe that they were unable to develop immunity to these diseases in time. It is difficult to imagine that in a relatively short period of time, the pandemic had spread throughout the world. Dinosaur populations on different continents 
are unlikely to have had active contact with each other. But it's also difficult to assume that disease equally affects not only land, but also sea and air reptiles. Better Competitors It is known by the end of the era of dinosaurs, many different species of mammals lived on Earth. They were much more adapted to life in cold climates. True, even the largest of them did not exceed modern badgers in size. But some scientists suggest that the main prey of predatory and omnivorous mammals were dinosaur eggs. This could lead to the degeneration of populations of even the largest lizards. It is possible that dinosaur eggshells became stronger to protect against such a threat. But because of this, not all the cubs could get out of them on their own. Researchers also expressed the opinion that the presence of animals that actively fed on eggs influenced the change in the habits of the dinosaurs themselves. It is believed that dinosaurs were not good parents. They did not raise their young and did not even monitor their clutches. But the parental instincts of the latest dinosaurs were much stronger. Many of them built nests and protected newborn cubs. Also, some scientists associated the appearance of plumage with the need to hatch eggs. Global Evolutionary Experiment This theory is more of a conspiracy theory than science. In certain, often pseudo-scientific circles, versions of controlled evolutions are put forward. Allegedly, the entire process of the development of life on the planet is part of a global experiment of unknown creatures or some higher intelligence, and every extinction is the consequence of the unsuccessful development of this experiment. Followers of this conspiracy should also think about the fate of humanity. Perhaps soon, extraterrestrial intelligence will understand that the experiment with humanity also did not achieve the desired results, and then the test site in the form of planet Earth will be cleared for the next attempt. But most of the proposed causes of the global extinction of life on Earth could be a consequence of the fall of a large meteorite. Quite a number of serious scientific facts have now been collected to support this theory. The first suspicions about meteorite bombardment of the planet's surface were voiced in 1979 by paleontologist Luis Alvarez. At an international conference in Copenhagen, he presented a report on the increased content of iridium in sediments of the corresponding age. He discovered them in 1977 while examining rock samples in the Italian Alps. Iridium is a rare earth metal. Previously, it had only been found in such quantities in the remains of asteroids. And in 1978, near the Mexican city of Xixilub, a round crater with a diameter of about 150 kilometers was discovered. At that time, scientists knew of more than 50 craters of different sizes, but their origins remained controversial. The fact is that the craters that appeared many millions of years ago were not so pronounced by the period being described. For comparison, you can look at the surface of the moon this object appeared long before the extinction of the dinosaurs, breaking away from the Earth, but the Moon has no atmosphere or liquid water. Because of this, virtually no geological changes occur on its surface. The boundaries of the crater in Mexico can still only be seen due to its enormous size. The scale of the catastrophe that befell the planet after his fall was also enormous. In 1981, at a conference in the American state of Utah, other scientists also spoke about the presence of iridium deposits. This metal was present in rock samples about 66 million years old, taken from Scandinavia to New Zealand. Alvarez's theory has found a large number of followers, but there were also those who tried to prove the opposite. Interest in studying the layers of the end of the Cretaceous period has increased among both the former and the latter. It was then that the decrease in the level of the world's oceans, a cooling of the climate, the activation of volcanoes, and other facts were revealed. In general, the extinction process, which took several million years, can be described as follows. A meteorite 
falling into the ocean caused a huge wave. A tsunami up to 100 meters high washed away vast coastal areas. A blast wave of gigantic power circled the globe several times. All this was accompanied by fires, earthquakes, and eruptions. Hundreds of millions of tons of rock, volcanic ash, and various gases rose into the air. Recent studies say that at the site of the meteorite fall, there were deposits of silicate rocks. Their particles ranging in size from 0.8 to 8 micrometers raised into the air, becoming an insurmountable obstacle to the sun's rays. Modeling of this situation showed the volcanic ash and other consequences of eruptions are not capable of creating such a density. According to scientists, permanent weather could have lasted for 10 to 15 years. Freshwater ecosystems were able to recover faster from the consequences of the disaster. In the seas and oceans, the basis of all life diversity is phytoplankton. Rivers and lakes are saturated with essential micro-elements, primarily from washed-out rocks. This may explain the survival of freshwater crocodiles, turtles, birds, and bony fish. If you think that these problems have not affected mammals, then you are very mistaken. Their number and diversity of species have decreased to minimal values. They were simply more advanced creatures compared to reptiles. This helped them not only survive in harsh conditions, but also quickly restore their numbers. Mammals quickly occupied the vacant ecological niches and recolonized the planet. Subsequently, the development of one of the surviving species led to the emergence of the new owners of the planet. Humans But, by all indicators, another catastrophe on a planetary scale is just around the corner and who knows, maybe in a few tens of million years, some new creatures will look for the reasons for the extinction of humanity. Or maybe humans can prepare for new challenges and remain the dominant species for another cycle. We express our gratitude to the viewers who watched our episodes to the very end. If you're interested in the era of dinosaurs, as well as other geological periods in the history of our planet, we advise you to pay attention to the previous videos. From them, you can learn more about the origins of various types of living beings and the development of life on Earth in general.